Peter's life is possibly the most excellent redemption story ever written. He was a fisherman, and fishermen were stereotypically men of action, very physical and unafraid of others, which Peter demonstrates in the Bible. Yet this simple fisherman's journey to an apostle of Christ is found in the precious New Testament. It is tough to capture the impact of Peter's life in a single video, because his legacy is rich in knowledge and relevant messages. However, Peter faced a significant challenge as the devil had a mark on him. And Jesus informed him of this to give authority to this dilemma. At the Last Supper, Jesus warned Simon Peter that a test of faith was coming. Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you as wheat. Luke chapter 22 verse 31. The outspoken disciple appeared to be in a difficult situation. Satan desired to sift Peter's wheat, which means he wanted to shake Peter's faith so violently that he would fall, demonstrating that God's faithful servant was lacking. But it wasn't just Peter who was in danger. In Luke chapter 22 verse 31, the word for you is plural. Jesus was telling Peter that Satan had set his sights on all of the disciples. Some translations, like the Berean Study Bible, specify the entire group. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. This passage gives us a glimpse into an unseen world. It raises many questions, but it also affords many assurances the chief of which is the chain of command. God is clearly in control, and the devil is on a short leash. Did you notice the verb that followed Satan's name? Ask. Satan has asked. The outspoken disciple seemed to be in the same predicament as Job when Satan sought to put him to the test in Job chapters 1 and 2. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds is spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The devil did not demand, resolve, or decide anything. He inquired. He asked for permission to tempt Simon Peter in the same way he asked for permission to tempt Job. Doesn't recast our image of the old snake? God will use all beings for the sake of his kingdom. The name Satan means adversary or accuser. He accuses God's people of doing wrong. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 Then the angel showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord with Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. As Peter later testified, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 Sift as wheat is a metaphor that can also mean shake someone apart or break someone down. Amos chapter 9, verse 9 gives us a similar image of God shaking Israel. For surely I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve, yet not the smallest grain shall fall to the ground. Wheat or other grain was sifted through a sieve or large strainer in biblical times. The dirt and other impurities that clung to the grain during the threshing process would separate from the good, usable grain as it was violently shaken. Satan's goal in sifting Peter and the other disciples as wheat was to crush them and destroy their faith. In reality, the adversary seeks to destroy every believer's faith. John chapter 10 verse 10 The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. However, Jesus assured Peter, I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers.
Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Peter's role as a leader in the early church demonstrated that the Lord's prayer for Peter was answered. Jesus did not promise to take away Peter's upcoming test. He prayed that his faith should not fail. In the Christian life, trials are to be expected. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, say the missionaries in Acts chapter 14, verse 22. God uses these experiences to shape our character, strengthen our faith, and make us more like Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6-7 to seven. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than the gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. James chapter 1, verse 12 Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Whenever we go through a test, Jesus is with us to strengthen us and intercede for us. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. It's comforting to remember that Satan's power to sift Peter's wheat was limited by Christ's intercession. 
When Satan comes after us, we must remember that Jesus Christ is always present to intercede on our behalf. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus was confident that Simon Peter would recover and to go on to help the other disciples. Another reason the Lord allows us to go through trials is that we can learn how to help others grow in faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6 Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Prior to his threefold denial, Peter was overconfident, relying on his own strength. However, after being sifted like wheat, Peter discovered that failure is possible due to the weakness of the flesh. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now that he understood how easy it is to fall, Peter would have compassion and mercy for others, while helping them avoid the same mistake. True faith and perseverance are revealed not through sinless perfection, but through repentance and restoration. After we fall, we get up and keep going, just like Peter. When Satan comes to sift us like wheat, we have an advocate in Jesus Christ who intercedes on our behalf. John chapter 17 verses 9 to 11 I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. John chapter 17 verse 15 I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. He will shield us, so that the devil will never be able to destroy our faith and hope. John chapter 10 verses 27 and 28 my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 Therefore he is also able to save the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus Christ began a good work in us, and he will see it through to completion. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We all make our way through the valley of failure. The question is, how will you respond? Many people give up and trade a vibrant kingdom-serving life for a defeated life. Failure, however, does not have to be the end. It is an opportunity for a fresh start in Christ's strength. The enemy hoped to shake Peter's face so hard that he would fall away from Jesus like chaff. Peter was adamant about keeping his promise to Jesus. Even though all may fall away, yet I will not. Mark chapter 14, verse 29. But Satan is well aware of the power of fear. When Satan sifts believers, his goal is to weaken our faith to the point where we are no longer useful to God. He wishes to keep us out of the way of the Lord's kingdom's action. As a result, he targets our weaknesses, the areas where we believe we are invincible, or at least very well protected. 
We are disappointed and demoralized when the devil succeeds, but that doesn't have to be the case. God can use failure to do spiritual house cleaning if we are willing. Peter put down his pride and put on the courage of the Holy Spirit. Following that, he risked humiliation, persecution, and death to spread the gospel. Failure served as a catalyst for greater faith and true servanthood. It is a great encouragement to know that God is always stronger than Satan, and that by faith in him, we can avoid Satan's destruction and gain a crown of life. But the text is not yet done. God's word of consolation and hope goes farther. We need for our daily struggles some encouragement that in a time of suffering and weakness, we will not abandon the faith and curse God. We need some reassurance that the ups and downs of our faith will not end someday in a permanent down and fail utterly. And Jesus gives us that encouragement and reassurance in verse 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. It is encouraging to know that God is infinitely stronger than Satan in that if we simply trust God to the end, he will give us eternal life. But it is doubly encouraging, doubly hopeful, that Jesus Christ and God the Father do not stand back and watch to see if we will have the strength to endure in faith. In fact, I am sure that if the Holy Trinity were not busy day and night strengthening my faith, it would evaporate in a minute. Notice Jesus prays to his Father for Simon. Now the word you is singular in verse 32. I prayed for you, that is Simon. He asks God to do what needs to be done in order to preserve Simon from destruction. And Jesus is completely confident that his father will answer his prayer because he says, and when you have turned, strengthen your brothers. Jesus knows that Simon will deny him three times. He says so in verse 34. But evidently, Jesus does not consider this brief denial to be the utter failure that Satan is after. It is a temporary weakness, a brief faltering of confidence, but it is followed quickly by bitter tears of repentance. Luke chapter 22 verse 62 And turning Jesus knew he would turn from his sin because he had prayed for him that his faith not fail utterly. The Father granted Satan the power to sift Simon, but in response to Jesus' prayer, he did not let Simon fall through the sieve, nor will he ever let any of his children fall through Satan's sieve. Here is the double weapon of hope and encouragement that he gives us. Not only is God willing and supremely able to save forever all of us who trust him, he also conspires with the Son to keep us trusting to the end. We are not left without a shield against the enemy, nor are we left to hold the shield of faith merely by our own strength. God will always see to it that faith has the victory and that his children have faith. This is the meaning of that terrific text in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-5. to Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ John chapter 10, verses 27 to 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. 
I and my Father are one. No one can take them from my hand or from my Father's hand, because we are one hand, and it is mightier than all. That same promise is extended to all of God's children. Hold on to it, and be encouraged by it whenever you begin to doubt that your faith in God will last. The strengthened becomes the strengthener. The joy we have in God's promises is always multiplied when it spills over the brim of our lives and onto others. What about the remaining ten apostles? We can learn a lot from this. God will sometimes deal with you directly, strengthening your faith alone in the early morning hours. However, the majority of the time, perhaps ten elevenths of the time, God strengthens our faith through another person. God sends us Simon Peter, who brings us just the word of grace we need to keep going, a testimony about how weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 